and welcome back to episode eight of season three of the Canary Room. And we are back, as you can see, in the Canary Room for today's episode. Uh, I must say a massive thank you to Julian of Julian's Canary Bird Room and Steve and Bob of the Yorkie Supreme Stud. Um, the feedback for both of those shows has been incredible and I hope to, as soon as this lockdown is lifted, revisit the guys later on in the season to see how they've got on. We've also got a couple of other trips planned, so we're going to see a British stud and a Norwich stud as well, just as soon as we are able to do so. While I'm thanking people, a huge thank you to everybody who has donated to the show. Um, your donations help part from the trip to Steve and Bob and Julian. So, um, you know, I really, really do appreciate them. I must say a thank you to Darren Ashpole, um, Michael Burling again. Michael's got shares in the show, as has Peter Hosp now and David Lefeva. Gents, thanks very much for your very kind generosity. And to Mick Goran Jr. as well. Cheers, Mick. Much appreciated, mate. Um, if you are able to and you like what you see, donation button, homepage of our YouTube channel. It really is appreciated. Thank you. So today we've got an epic episode for you. Uh, it's been about six weeks or so since we've been in the Canary Room. Uh, you can hear there's a real... Um, real lust uh, singing around me. We've got uh, plenty of chicks to introduce you to. So we've got a return of your favourites. We've got Bird of the Week. Now it's a look back in the Canary Room archives for Bird of the Week this week. It's a male bullfinch that we owned a couple of years ago. Um, I did some filming of him at the time but he never made it onto the small screen so we're going to put that right today. We've got your top tips. Um, plenty of top tips in the show today. In fact it's packed full of them. What I will do as well is I'll take them out of the show and put them into mini edits um, and put them on the YouTube channel because they're easier to find. So I've had a number of people get in touch with me asking about egg food and soak seed and a variety of different things. All those videos are already on our channel so just take a look at them. Um, filmed a couple of years ago when my clothes fitted me slightly better. I don't know about you everybody but you know four weeks, five weeks into lockdown some of my clothes seem to have shrank in the wardrobe which is uh, somewhat unfortunate. So, as, as well as fashion tips from me, God help us all, we've got um, a, new, uh, a new animation produced by a very good friend of mine, Aaron. Uh, Aaron was um, influential in season one and season two of the show, and uh, he's very kindly done a new um, animation for the garden birds, so cheers for that, mate. Very much appreciated. And uh, we'll see some of the garden birds later on in the show. It's an extended section this time round. We will, of course, see the British finches in the Red Pole Diaries and see what they've been up to. Uh, and there's lots, lots more to enjoy. As I say, it's an epic one today. Uh, so sit down, grab yourself a cuppa. Mine's just here. And as always, enjoy the show. Well, plenty has happened uh, in the Canary Room since you were last here. There has inevitably, with uh, livestock, there have been passings. Unfortunately, we lost one of the Red Agate Mosaic uh, cockbirds. Uh, so I'm running the um, the other cockbird with, uh, with the hen. Uh, so all is not lost there. They've mated it up. Um, with, uh, with death comes new life as well. So um, I'm pleased to say that we've had a, a good, set, a steady, uh, solid start to the breeding season um, here in the Canary Room. So we've got young mosaics, we've got young borders, and we've got young fifes. So we'll have a, a little look at those over the course of today's show and in future episodes as well. Um, I've been asked a couple of times on uh, on the Facebook page and also our YouTube channel, um, how do you sex canaries? Well, 
It's a very interesting question. With the mosaics, it's relatively easy because the uh, the cocks and hens have slightly different markings. Although, as we saw in Julian's canary bird room uh, when we were over there a few weeks back, that some of Julian's, what you would class as hen mosaics, uh, look very, very much uh, like they're carrying the markings of cock birds. Uh, the birds I've got here from Julian, you can pretty much sex, which is uh, relatively easily. Uh, but even, even the canary <laughs> experienced breeders um, like myself and also I count myself in good company a couple of very good friends of mine who've kept birds for a number of years we can make mistakes and I have made a couple of mistakes this year so in the clear line you'll remember that we had three buff cocks running over uh, six clear yellow hens at least that was the plan uh, Interestingly enough, um, I was uh, running a couple of the cockbirds in, um, or what I thought were cockbirds. They didn't seem overly interested in treading. Uh, in fact, they seemed more interested in nest building. And um, when I uh, ran a cockbird in with them, uh, they laid eggs uh, and they mate it up. So um, instead of having uh, three buff cocks, clear buff cocks for the clear line, uh, we've got just one. Um, and he has five yellow hens to run with now, so he's a particularly busy boy. Um, I am pleased to say he has got uh, a couple of hens down. In fact, he's got chicks off three hens now. Um, and uh, we'll check later on in the show, we'll check the eggs of uh, a couple of the, uh, one of the other nests. Um, and the other nest I'm just going to set um, today. So fingers, fingers crossed on that. There is one hen. Um, that despite the fact that she was the first of the clear hens to be mated uh, and she's been mated on multiple occasions over the last weeks she's yet to lay uh, I cannot, cannot put my finger on why um, you know she's obviously in relatively good condition because she's mating uh, but she has absolutely no interest in building a nest you'll see I've put an extra nest pan in just in case she doesn't like the one at the back of the uh, cage that she's got there but as yet absolutely no interest so we'll persevere with her and we'll see how we get on um, speaking of changing sex the Norwich that we've got in the canary room they haven't done anything either yet now I did think that I might have two cockbirds um, I now think that I might have a hen and a cockbird um, what we'll do in our top tips today is I'll show you how I uh, use a needle and cotton um, to, to, to sex the birds um, and it's generally, particularly at this time of the year, a pretty accurate way of doing it so we'll have a look at, little look at that later on in our top tips. So the clears, as I've mentioned, we've got um, some chicks from them so far, um, so they've done okay. The oldest bird in the shed was one of the first birds to go down, the heavily variegated buff hen, just behind me here. She's actually on her second clutch of eggs now, and they are seven days old today. So we'll check those a little bit later on to see whether they're full or not. Um, you'll recall from our previous visit to the canary room that I didn't move any of the eggs first time round. I just let the hens lay and sit and I didn't interfere with the nests at all. Um, that's yielded some degree of success. You know, nests have generally hatched out all at the same time and we've got, uh, you know, a number of young, I think I've rang about 20, 24 young canaries so far, certainly five canaries so far. Um, now, what I'm doing as we move into the season, it's towards the end of April now, beginning of May. What I'm doing now is I am removing the eggs and I am storing them in the egg food drawers. Now, you can see we've got the orange stickers on there donating the cage number and I'm just putting the eggs in there, making sure that I turn them every day as the hen would do before waiting till four eggs are laid and then setting the clutch. Now, some hens won't lay four eggs, some will lay three, some will lay five, but I'm setting them at four. So, steady start here in the canary room. It's time for us to see how the wild birds are getting on as we go back out in the garden. We had uh, 
a number of new visitors to the garden over the last few weeks since you were here last. Um, the first of which to introduce themselves are this delightful couple of goldfinches on the feeder. I have waited uh, months to welcome goldfinches to the garden and they've been here with uh, regular frequency over the last uh, few weeks which has been fantastic to see. Absolutely beautiful birds, stunning, stunning. Uh, we welcome some collared doves as well. Um, so they were a, a new uh, a new addition to uh, to our garden feature. Of course, we've got our very, very friendly robin, uh, who's uh, always around. In fact, we've got a pair of robins, uh, which I think are nesting somewhere in the garden. As were the beautiful wood pigeons, which, um, well, they're the size of small chickens, to be fair. Huge, huge birds. And then one of the most camera shy of all the birds. Now, don't forget, we got some long tail tits in uh, in one of our previous episodes, but we finally managed to catch on camera one of the blue tits who've been messing around by the feeder. Um, I really, really love the garden birds. It's lovely to see them at this time of year, building nests, picking up food. Um, they're just a, a real thing of, you know, know of natural beauty and you know in these difficult times we have to look for for silver linings and one of the things has been the um you know the ability to hear the birds more as traffic has dimmed down and you know we can see more of them in their natural habitat so that's been absolutely lovely to see when the garden birds are absolutely stunning uh, and again special thanks to aaron for the animation thanks mate um, one of the, the telltale signs uh, that there is new life in the canary room is eggshells on the floor of the cages. Uh, if you, um, you, know, you don't want to interfere with the nest too much, um, then it's, uh, it's a really good sign to see uh, an eggshell on the floor. Of course, there are times when that eggshell still has a chick in it. Um, and one of the cages, unfortunately, one of our dark hens, our dark buff hen, had uh, three dead-in shell. Um, now, there can be a whole series of reasons for dead-in shell. Um, you can see here that one of them was a fully formed chick, and here uh, was um, not quite formed, but you can see there's definitely been a chick in there at some stage. Now, can't give up have to keep going uh, so I've um, popped a bath on that hen um, and put it down again and she's on four eggs which I'll check later on this week to see whether they're fertile or not. Humidity can be a problem in the bird room particularly at this time of year and one of the things that I've done uh, is put buckets of water um, in the canary room. I've wiped the floor down and left the floor wet making sure not to slip and break my neck. Um, I've also put in a, a new fan at the back of the canary room just to pull more fresh air through um, just to make sure there's a constant flow and that's certainly made some kind of difference. What I will do is pop a bath on the birds just before they're uh, due to hatch to help them with the humidity and then what I also do uh, if a hen hasn't hatched on the date that she should I will bob the eggs. Now you can see here I'm utilizing one of the mugs from the kitchen and I'm uh, bobbed a nest of eggs that were due to hatch on Friday. One of the eggs I thought I saw slightly move. Um, they didn't hatch on Saturday and today I thought, God, give up all hope really. And I was delighted to see that one of them has hatched. Now only one so far. I have had a couple of single nest chicks, which I'm absolutely fine with. Um, and so, uh, but you'll see it's it's under a green, but it's not actually a green chicken. And, and that's because I moved the egg from one of the old yellow clear hens. So there's a four year old clear yellow hen, an orange ring that I bought him from Gerald last year. And that had been with the, uh, mated with the single buff cock um, that we've got. And she'd uh, laid a couple of eggs, just two. 
Uh, it looks like one of them was full, one was empty, and that chick has hatched, but it's hatched at 16 days and not 14 as you'd normally expect. So the lesson for us all there is don't be too hasty to throw chicks away. We have, although it's been warm in the days, we're fully insulated in the canary room anyway. It has been very cold at night still. So this chick's obviously taken a little bit longer to develop and we'll see how that develops over the course of the weeks ahead. Um, we're going to have a look uh, in the later part of the show of how some of the nests have developed. So we'll have a look at uh, a pair of cinnamons, the cinnamon hen, and we'll have a look at the agat mosaics, and we'll also have a look at the borders and their progress through the weeks from hatching to, uh, to lovely, lovely, lovely chicks. Stay tuned for that. It's time now for Bird of the Week. I mentioned earlier it was a trip to the Canary Room archive for this one. Um, I had a, uh, a bullfinch cock. Um, now a bullfinch cock without a bullfinch hen is, uh, is pretty. Um, pretty useless that is um but absolutely beautiful i did run it with norwich hen and there is something like a billion to one chance that they would mule and uh and this one didn't unsurprisingly um but still a very very beautiful bird um i had him for about 18 months uh, and then i moved him on um but an absolutely stunning bird and and as my you know my mind develops over the course of the uh, the weeks and months ahead for, for future plans for the canary room the idea of getting a pair of bullfinches uh, is one that appeals to me um but i don't really have the room for them so i have to remind myself of that but just to enjoy him he is this week's bird of the week from the canary room archives He was an absolute beauty, that bird. And, uh, and as I say, if the canary room was bigger, then I may be tempted to get some bullfinches moving forward. Um, my, uh, my plan um, to mule has been one that's, uh, that's been several years in the making. Um, the idea of getting Norwich back in the uh, canary room was to breed some uh, young Norwich um, and maybe run them with hopefully breeding some goldfinches and to do a, a little bit of muling um, next year. Um, I have had one successful attempt of muling in the past that was with a Twite Norwich cross. Uh, we were introduced to that bird all the way back in season uh, episode one season three of the canary room um, and we can see here a little clip of that bird uh, an absolute beauty absolute beauty um, i am doing some uh, some mini muling this year with the um with the uh, red poles and the oh scotch fancy hens gosh matt where's your brain gone it's gone to mush um i've got one scotch fancy hen on uh, on four eggs the other one has laid three but has absolutely no interest in sitting whatsoever so i have put those under a mosaic uh, just to see whether there's anything in them um i don't think there will be to be honest um but we will see and uh, you know let's see if we can't get some little mini mules as well for the show bench later on in the season it feels like it's that time already it's time for our favourite part of the show. It's the Red Bull Diaries. Well, all quiet on the uh, Red Pole front, I think, is um, is how we summarise things. Um, I have been um, gradually conditioning the birds over the uh, the last few weeks since you were last here. So I've um, I've introduced dandelion. Um, we've got some dandelions growing uh, in the garden, so I make sure I wash them before I give them to the birds. Um, they're getting egg food daily now. Little finger draws of egg food, not too much. 
um, just to make sure that they remain in tip-top condition. I don't want to put too much weight on them because uh, that will uh, that won't be good for their for their breeding. Um, they have uh, I've seen them beaking each other, uh, so just pretending to feed each other, um, which is uh, which is a good sign. Um, that's a sign of progress. Uh, we've got those delightful um, mealworms here in the canary room as well that we're uh, that we're feeding them once a week just to give them a bit of extra protein. Um, I've moved the uh, Yumo Siberian cock uh, to one of the other hens. She seemed to be a little bit further advanced, so I put him in, and uh, I've seen them beaking each other. The the pea throats have also um, sort of started to beak each other as well. So still very early for the British. Uh, I don't expect them to go down, start building until sort of mid-May, end of May, maybe even early June. Um, so. I know that there are people uh, across the UK who've got red poles built up and breeding and, and all kinds and, and you know I wish them the best of luck but mine will go down when they're ready to go down. Uh, as I say gradual conditioning, pop baths in as well for them, baths is a great great conditioner for them um, but they remain things of real real beauty. I've, um, I've started to plan forward ahead for next year um, <clears throat> depending on how we get on with the uh, the red poles and the rest of the British finches. Um, I'm going to have a, a go, um, I think, at bringing in um, maybe a green finch hen if I can, um, and, uh, and and start to do some uh, some muling um, on a more sort of uh, intense schedule. My my trip to Steve uh, Dominey has inspired me to look at uh, the cages in the canary room. I, I think I mentioned on that episode they're due to be painted. So um, although I leave the block behind me, the main block. And, uh, and the block to the left of me may well be replaced with plastic cages and if I do that that will give me some more room uh, and enable me to to think a little bit long and hard about what mules I might want to breed but the red poles so far they're all still with us touch wood and we'll keep an eye on them across the weeks and months ahead when we were last in the canary room um, you, you may well recall I talked about the, the borders mating uh, just behind me. Um, I'm pleased to say that the borders uh, laid five eggs, uh, five were full, uh, one unfortunately didn't hatch. The other four have hatched. Um, and as we take a look here, I've um, I've captured them through the uh, the first sort of 21 days of life at various different stages. So we can see them when they're first hatched, and we can see them developing um, as as little chicks, and then. Um, you know, over the course of, uh, of weeks two of their lives, we can just see them growing and growing and growing and developing. You know, <clears throat> I was I was very sceptical. A good friend of mine, Graham Holdsworth, supplied me with the borders, and he's um, he's been working on these uh, this line for, for a number of years now. And <clears throat> I was very sceptical when Graham said to me that um, you know that they would feed their own young, and, and borders have a um, have a reputation for being very poor feeders. Um, well, not this pair, uh, and uh, I stand, you know, pr proven, Graham is proven. Um, the cock, uh, you know, was feeding the hen on the nest to start with, um, and has really, really, really taken a hands-on role in feeding the young over the last few weeks. Um, I put some uh, pearl morbide on this morning for them, and you can see one of the young here just tucking into it. Um, so they're starting to feed themselves. I won't take them away just yet until I've seen them all feeding themselves. The, um, the variegated has only just come out of the nest. Uh, there's two clears, uh, a heavily variegated or three parts dark, um, and, uh, and, a, and a variegated. And the variegated has only just come out. Um, you'll notice that I've got um, pecking boards in there. Um, uh, they were, uh, I've been looking for these for a number of years now and they were uh, an acquisition from Stafford. My only regret is I only bought 10 of them. Um, so they're in a, a number of the cages. Um, and we'll have a look now in our top tips at our updated recipe for egg food that we're feeding all of the canaries.
So we start with our dry mix and um, our dry mix uh, consists of a, a couple of different blends of, um, of uh, preparatory egg food mix um, that we use here in the canary rooms. And then what I've done, uh, which is an addition, and actually this follows my visit to, uh, to Julian's, is I've bought um, Germix, which is a, uh, a sort of um, dehydrated soak seed. Uh, so it's supposed to have all of the quality of soak seed locked into it without some of the dangers. Now I'm still feeding soak seed. Um, so what I do is I put four or five little egg food drawers in to start with, then one of the germix, and then I take that mixture into the house and I add the rest of the dry ingredients. Now the dry ingredients that I'm adding in the breeding season are grog, now I've used Grog for a number of years. It's now it's a Dr. Kutal product, uh, again available from Pantex. Um, it is a, a, a sort of full um, antibacterial. Um, it's uh, supposed to prevent black spots um, in young, which can be, uh, you know, incredibly deadly uh, in in any any livestock or any certainly bird livestock. Um, so I use that, and then I use a a spoonful of uh, granulated seaweed. Um, which just you know packed with vitamins and minerals. Then uh, I start using the wet products. So I'll add in couscous, um, and then I'll add in some petit pois. And then finally I add in my, uh, my special blend of mix, which uh, is unchanged. So that's got apple, it's got kiwi, it's got carrot, it's got kale, it's got, uh, still got a little bit of garlic in there as well. Um, I mix it all together. And then I bring it into the canary room and I give it to the canaries. Now, um, I give it to all the birds actually in the canary room. You'll notice as well that I've got pearl morbide. Um, now, I've, um, I've been aware of pearl morbide for a number of years, um, but I've never really sort of tried it until this season. And actually, one of the reasons I did try it was because um, uh, of the, the British finches more than anything else. Um, I, originally I was mixing it with the egg food, but I, I've, I've started to provide it neat to the canaries now, um, just in egg food drawers, because some of them seem to like it um, and will eat it straight away, and some of them don't seem that interested in it, so that will allow me to judge which is which. Is which. And then what I do is I mix the remaining um, pearl morbide up with some of the egg food that I've mixed, and I give that to all of the British finches, so they get their fair share of, uh, of goodies as well. So that's our updated recipe for um, the breeding season, for our egg food, you can see. Birds love it, straight on it. 
and straight feeding the young, which is absolutely what we want. Our second top tip on the show today involves one of these. It's a mobile phone. It doesn't have to be an iPhone, um, but it's uh, a mobile phone and it's how we check the fertility of the eggs. So what I've been doing, as I mentioned earlier, I'm storing the eggs now in egg food drawers. I'm storing them in mixed canary. Um, now, mixed canary, uh, <laughs> could be plain canary, it doesn't really matter, but um, it holds the eggs well, it makes them easier to turn, it's not going to dry them out, it's not going to absorb any of the moisture from them, um, so I, I store the eggs there, um, I store them on top of the cages just above me, i would be really careful when I'm pulling them down, um, and uh, and then what I'll do is I'll set the birds. I use my diary, which if I just jump out of shot and jump back into shot, you can see this bad boy here, uh, day of the week diary. It's got all of the notes on. So as, I'm, as eggs are laying, as hens are missing days, um, you know, it can be a sign if a hen lays a couple of days and then misses a day that the eggs will be infertile. Not a guarantee, but it can be a sign. So what I'm doing is um, I'm checking the eggs and what I'll do as you can see here I pop the light down I pop the light on the phone and I simply hold the egg over it now I can check it about four days um, and I can see whether there's something started in there what I like to do really is leave it to seven days and at seven days what you'll be able to see is if you can see still see the egg sack in there uh, the, the yolk in there then the egg is clear at seven days you should see that the egg is dark um, and you can see the sort of the, the veins if you like of the developing chick inside there now one of the reasons that I check the eggs particularly as we move into the business end of the season was this episode will come out it'll be early May and um, and you know I've got young in the nest so we're sort of first round moving on to the second round for some of the birds and what I want to make sure now is that I give them every opportunity to produce young early on I'm happy to take the odd single nest and um, first bird that we've rung uh, in the canary room is a single nester and um, it's one of three chicks that are away at the moment and feeding themselves um, but what I have been able to do is check the fertility of certain eggs. So with our cinnamon and white line, this is particularly important for me. In cage B, I have a variegated, cinnamon, uh, variegated buff hen. Now, I'd noticed even when I'd run the cock, cinnamon cock bird in with her, she wasn't keen to mate him, wasn't keen at all. Um, but she'd laid a round of eggs. I checked them and they were all clear. What I had noticed was one of the variegated birds that I'd run the white cock with had also laid four eggs and I'd set them in the same day. And I like to do that wherever I can. I checked those eggs and they were all full. Now, my thinking is that the, you know, it's important that I get both whites and cinnamons this year. So what I've done is I've taken the eggs from the variegated uh, yellow bird and I've put them under the variegated buff bird and I've thrown the variegated buffs clear eggs away so she will incubate those eggs she'll hatch them as if they were her own and then she'll go on to rear them and the hope is 
by the time she's ready again, so 14 days incubation, 21, 22 days rearing chicks. So if I look at sort of, um, you know, that as a sort of four, five, six week cycle, I reintroduce the cock uh, about 14 days when the chicks are about 14 days, 15 days old, then she will absolutely accept the cock this time round. And I may only get one round with her, but I will have got one round with her. And that of course gives me the chance to get another round out of the variegated yellow bird with the white cock. Um, I've also done it where with the uh, another variegated um, that I was running the white cock with and um, only one of her eggs were full. Well, as it happens in cage C, another of the variegated birds that had laid just two eggs and they were both full. So I popped it underneath cage C. So she's now on three full eggs. So she's got a nice little clutch when that hatches. Now the beauty of course will be, um, I should be able to tell the birds apart um, because in cage C, if there's any cinnamons, they're definitely the cinnamons. And if there are any whites, then they'll be the whites. So hopefully, fingers crossed, should be uh, okay with that. And as we saw earlier, um, you know, in cage 18, that hen had uh, had hatched a, a clear bird. Um, and that's one of the things that you can do. You know, you can drop clear eggs in with darks and you'll be able to identify them almost straight away. So that's our second top tip on today's show, candling the eggs. Now, one of the things that we did, um, you'll recall, we housed the, uh, we overwintered some of the canaries together uh, to try and form a pair bond. And um, had a, a challenge with our, uh, our change in sex of one of the birds. Um, and what that meant was that I, I didn't want, uh, with the one clear buff cock that I'd got, I didn't want to run that over six hens because although it's possible to do, um, I didn't really want to, to, to sort of run the risk of exhausting, or exhausting him, but also um, getting too many infertile eggs. So his mother, which I didn't really want to pair him back over, I decided to run with the white cock. Now, the challenge with this was that every time I run the white cock in, they would fight. Uh, and she was just not going to accept him anyway. So I was, um, uh, well, uh, a little bit sneaky. And uh, it's one of our third top tips for the show today. Um, and that is um, how to, to, to run a pair together that you want to uh, when they, uh, when they perhaps don't want it themselves, or certainly the hen rejects the cock. Um, so you'll, uh, you'll remember that we had uh, earlier this year, we installed um, uh, just screws on the cages to hang the training cages on. Uh, so what I do, and I'll do a, a full length video of this, because I'm just gonna show you the, the abridged version. This, this didn't happen straight away. Um, you know, patience is the game in all canary breeding. So overall, this was about eight minutes uh, until it actually happened. Um, now, of course, at the moment, we've all got plenty of time on our hands. So, uh, so that was uh, eight minutes well spent. But what I did was I hung on the cage a, um, a clear yellow cock, which was in uh, incredible breeding condition. Um, it's being singled off um, and is absolutely bouncing. In fact, you can probably hear it in the background. And um, I put the, the white cock in, they fought, and then I hung the cage on the front and the cock inside the cage started to sing to the hen. Uh, we had a, a false start where the white cock tried to mount her and got chased off. And then we had a successful mating, as you can see here. Now, as I say, it did take quite a lot longer. Um, and I'll do a standalone video for that, uh, which I'll upload to the YouTube channel. Um, now, can't just guarantee doing this once. I've done it three or four times, four or five times probably over the course of a few days. The hen then did lay again, um, and I've just set her this morning. Uh, she laid three eggs, so I've just set her this morning. Um, I'll check them in a week's time. Won't know whether they're, they're full or not, but hopefully they will be. Uh, so that's our third top tip on the show. Our final one is, um, well, is sexing birds using a... Uh, a needle and cotton method. So I'll show you how to do that right now. 
We talked about sexing birds uh, and our, our lack of success so far in the canary room. Um, what we have is a needle and cotton. Um, see it there against my hand. Um, and this is a relatively old fashioned technique of doing it. If I catch the cock up now and do. The same thing here. You can see that the needle is moving forwards and backwards so that would donate that that bird is a cock let's just do the head give the bird a blow on the vent hold the needle over moving in a circular manner so that would indicate that we do have a cock and a hen what we of course need to do um, is try and get these birds into a bit better condition as at the moment the hen hasn't up any string. Now it's not unusual for the bigger canaries to be later into condition, although the borders have come into condition, but I consider where the cage is um, here as well. Uh, so that's how you needle sex uh, a canary. Regular viewers to the show will know that we have a, um, a love-hate, love-ish type of relationship with cinnamons, uh, cinnamons in the five fancy canaries that we keep here. And yeah, it's only a little bit of fun. It is the only color special that has eluded me as a champion. Um, and, uh, and what's interesting, I could I could claim this was no longer the case because Merseyside, Border and Fife uh, have become a Federation affiliated show uh, this year in 2020. Uh, and I have won Best Cinnamon at Merseyside, Border and Fife. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't a Fife uh, affiliated show when I won it. Um, I've won it, uh, won second best on, uh, I think, three, three or four separate occasions now. Um, so we spent some time trying to develop the cinnamon line. We've got a, a nice cinnamon variegated yellow cock that we're running with four hens. Uh, we're running with a white hen, a, um, a two variegated hens, uh, normal colours, and a cinnamon, a cinnamon intermediate feather, uh, yellow feather really, but sort of borderline intermediate. So we have had uh, some success. We've got four visual cinnamons so far. Um, we know we've got uh, at least two, clear, uh, two full eggs as well um, from the cinnamon cock. Um, this uh, this young mum here has been a um, you know Touchwood a, a really really good bird. Uh, a bird I got in from Stuart Roberts, and um, she has fed you know really well. She she decided she wasn't going to nest um, in the nest pan I provided for her, so she wanted to nest in the corner. I put a, a clay pot in there uh, for her to build up in. Um, uh, she laid uh, I think four or five eggs. Um, only three of them hatched. I did move a dark in for, um, from another nest for a while, uh, which she fed, but that dark was never gonna make it, unfortunately. Um, so some of the early shots that we've seen, there's a fourth chick in the nest. And, and these chicks are developing quite nicely, as we can see, over the course of their, their first couple of weeks. Um, I have run the cinnamon cock in with her again, uh, and he's attempted to tread her. I'm not sure he's had a successful mating yet, but uh, I will put a pan on the back of the cage in the next day or so and try and get another nest out of her. Um, I've got another cinnamon from her in another nest. So she laid 
an egg initially and uh, and then missed a few days. Uh, that egg turned out to be full. Um, it was reared by one of my green buff hens. Um, so as I say, there's three in the nest behind me and there are four uh, in total. Um, as we move on to the uh, agat mosaics, um, agat red mosaics, uh, a real thing of beauty in these birds. I'm, I'm really struck with them. Um, as I mentioned uh, at the very beginning of the show, we lost one of the cocks. Um, so I've got one cock now and two hens. I think part of the thing I like about them is, um, is you can visually sex them. Uh, so there's no needles required there, or I certainly can at the moment anyway. Um, the, um, the hen has uh, hatched four originally. Um, in fact, she hatched five originally, one lost in the first day or so. Um, and then she had uh, four which, um, which lasted for, for you know, a week or so, and then tragically, uh, almost unexplained, you know, you can see here, the, the bird was, um, had a full crop, uh, but had, had just died in the nest. So um, I've, uh, I've got three, um, a gap mosaic young at the moment. Um, they've been close rung, all of them, so they've got IOA rings on, as the borders have, and as the British, if we manage to breed any of those, will have as well. Um, so we'll see how we uh, we get on with those as we, we move forward. But they've developed quite nicely. The, the pair have been really, really good feeders. I've moved, as I say, the cock over with the other hen, uh, and he has mated with her on a number of occasions. She's built up, um, and so hopefully the uh, the first egg will follow shortly, and that will be full, uh, and then I'll have some sort of half sisters and, and half brothers to pull from um, in future years. So uh, I'm struck with the agat mosaics. I, I think they're a, they're a beautiful bird. I'd asked Julian when I, I went to see him, and um, had my eye on uh, on a couple of uh, red wings, so grey wings, whatever they're called, wings. But they're beautiful, beautiful grey wings. They're called. I know what they're called. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we'll see if we can't get a little a little stud of, uh, of really nice coloured canaries going. Something in the room is going to have to go because uh, the room isn't big enough. Um, I've had a couple of people ask me where I put my young. Uh, well, all you'll see really is the top half of me, uh, which is not a bad thing because um, uh, from about there downwards, in fact, you'd say from about there downwards, it's not a pretty sight. Um, I have, uh, the cages are in rows of six. So you see probably uh, the top four rows. Uh, there's another two rows of cages underneath. Um, on this side, just behind me here, I've got um, two rows of cages and then a flight cage that you don't see. So the, the birds, the, the Norwich or the lowest cage down that you see. And at the moment underneath there, we've got a couple of cages, a couple of um, sort of, that will be cages that are just used for storage. Um, so, uh, you know, at the moment there's various different things, a bit of camera equipment, um, various different bits and bobs for, for nesting materials and the likes that are that are held under there as well. So um, there is um, there's plenty of room uh, for the young. I have also got flights, uh, a couple of four foot flights, and I've got another metal cage, uh, metal double breeding cage that I can bring into the room um, should I need additional space. Um, generally what I find is that as the season goes on and, you know, fingers crossed we breed, you know, a, a fair few, few canaries, that um, as some of the older birds start to go into a molt, I can put them into flight cages and then this bank here, the main block of cages opens up as well to have some of the young. Long way from, uh, long way from needing that just yet. Um, so that is almost all we've got time for. We are not going to go on the road today. Um, we went on the road for the last two episodes. And as I mentioned right at the beginning of the show, we will hopefully, when the lockdown is lifted, we'll be back on the road again. Um, I've certainly enjoyed the, uh, the visits to fanciers across the UK. And it seems you have too, which is fantastic. Um, we've got uh, question time coming up. So we've had a question into the show from Debbie Stout. Debbie is one of our Facebook top fans. So thanks, Debbie, for getting in touch. And it's a really good question. You know, where, where does everyone store all of their stuff? Nobody, none of the videos show the sort of storage space. And, um, and 
you know, the Canary Room is not a, a not a huge room, um, so uh, I don't retain a lot of storage in here. Um, most of the plastics are retained in the garage. Um, all of my uh, sort of soft food mix and um, mixes that I put in the water, they're in the kitchen, uh, Debbie. I do contain all the seed in the Canary Room, um, and so I use some um, special seed bins with uh, sort of airtight lids on them, um, which I picked up from Stafford last year, so we can see these here. Um, I've got four of them in the Canary Room, and um, they house the Canary Seed, the, the Red Pole Seed, and I give the Goldfinches a slightly different seed, so um, so they're all, uh, they're all housed in there. Um, Whilst we are uh, where we are with the with the um, the season at the moment, then I use the the shelves basically um, to store uh, the various different things. Some some nesting felts, um, some uh, dummy eggs, various different things, and then the um, the eggs which I store um, in the egg food dishes. Um, just on top of the cages so there isn't a great deal to show you in the canary room everything is dotted around various different parts of the house but uh, but thank you very much for getting in touch with the show and uh, on my future episodes out there I'll uh, I'll have a look around people's birds room have a little poke and a nose to see where they keep things so that's all we've got time for today uh, I hope you've enjoyed the show um, if you have give us a thumbs up give us a give us a like uh, and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel uh, really like to get over 6,000 subscribers if I can um, before the end of May so um, I'd be delighted to get that uh, so if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to the channel Canary Room comes out on a Sunday at 9 a.m. UK time every second week um, plenty more content plenty more highs and lows I'm sure until next time Take care.